don't normally sing before I preach, but uh, this goes along with the sermon. Um, you know, so I thought I'd just sing this song because it really, it's the, uh, the subject that uh, I'm going to speak on tonight, uh, this morning. So I thought I'd try this. I'm not a singer, but I'll try to, try to sing it uh, so you can hear the words. Um, sometimes my life is like a field of falling grain, parched, dry, and whittled, needing a little rain. But then I remember Days past and gone, how I reap from fields that I've never sown. I've never had a day, Lord, that I did not eat or place to lay my head down when it was time to sleep. I know I don't deserve all the blessings I've known. I'm reaping from fields, Lord, that I've never sown. Reaping from fields, Lord, that I've never sown. Eating from the table, milk and honey thereupon. Drinking from the fountain that flows from a living stone. I'm reaping from fields, Lord, that I've never sown. When I look at my children, what a blessing they've been. And Lord, you sure bless me with a multitude of friends. Stop, I'm reaping from fields I've never sown. I'm reaping from fields, Lord, that I've never sown. Eating from the table, milk and honey thereupon. Drinking from the fountain that flows from a living stone. I'm reaping from fields, Lord, that I've never sown. If you would take your Bibles and turn to John 4, 38 through 39. John 4, 38 through 39. As you're turning there, Memorial Day is Monday. My mom gave me a, a card, and uh, it's really a good card. It says, Definition of a Veteran. A veteran is someone who, at, the po- at one point in one's life, w- wrote... Let me start over. Definition of a veteran. A veteran is someone who, at one point in one's life, wrote a blank check made payable to the United States of America for an amount of up to and including my life. That is honor. And there are way too many people in this country who no longer understand it. Author unknown. So I thought that was really good. John 4, 38 through 39. And herein is that saying true. One soweth and another reapeth. I sent you to reap that whereon you bestowed no labor. Other men labored and he entered into their labors. Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this morning. We, la- we thank you, Lord, for uh, the opportunity to meet here. Uh, Lord, we thank you for your word. Lord, we can open and Lord, we can read your word. And Lord, you speak to us. And we thank you, Lord, for our prayer list, Lord, where we can come together and pray for each other, for the needs that we have. And Lord, that we know that we can come to a Heavenly Father who loves us, who cares about us, and Lord, who wants to see good for us. We pray, Lord, that you'll be with us this morning as we remember those who've done so much for our country, who have sacrificed their all. Lord, bless those who are willing to do such things as you did for us. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. John, that saying true, one soweth and another reapeth. I sent you to reap that whereon you bestowed no labor. I've titled this message, Clearing Fields So Others Can Reap the Fruit. Clearing Fields So That Others Can Reap the Fruit. You know, you've heard the saying, all gave some and some gave all. Uh, Memorial Day is a federal holiday remembering the people who have died while serving our country in their armed forces. The Bible says, and and, uh, Brother Chris was nice enough to make this graphic up here, it says, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. 
That's John 15, 13. Now, I was driving home the other day thinking what to preach on this morning. Memorial Day is Monday. And I was driving on the road. I'm driving in a nice car. Driving on a nice road. Going to a nice house. To be with my family. After I worked at my nice job. It has air conditioning. Nice building. Putting on clothes to go to that job. Nice clothes I have. Shoes. Food in the refrigerator. Freezer full of food. So much stuff in my house. As we're contemplating moving, I dread the thought of moving because we have so much stuff that we don't need that we'll have to box up and take to a house. So often, we're living on blessings of other people's labor. And as we remember Memorial Day, there's Veterans Day and Memorial Day, and they get confused sometimes, but Memorial Day is a day set aside to honor those who have paid the ultimate sacrifice for our country, those who have actually given their lives Audie Murphy was a famous, he was a movie star after he, after he was one of the most decorated soldiers in American history. And they were giving him a prestigious award, and he said, they asked him what about the award, and he said, I got the award. And he was talking about his buddy, and he said, he got dead. He, re, he understood, you know, sometimes we celebrate the heroes who went on living, but some of the heroes that didn't come back don't get all the, 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 the what they get, they, don't get, they didn't get what they deserved. You know, here we are reaping from fields that we haven't sown. We're, we're getting fruit off a tree we didn't plant. And the greatest benefits are often enjoyed by the least worthy. And as, and as I was on a nice road to my house, I was thinking, I didn't build this road. Somebody cleared this land. Somebody built this road. Going in a nice country where I was born free. So many people take for granted every day the blessings of other men's labors. And here in America especially, we are living on the fruit of someone else's labor. We are living a dream. And so often we take it for granted. We don't realize the sacrifice that went into it. This video, you know, if you watch it, you can weep. As you see... Soldiers fighting. You know, we never had to go. Some of us, some of you served in the military. We thank you so much for your service. Some of you may have went to war. We thank you so much for going to war for us, for putting your life on the line for us. I don't know what you went through. I don't understand what these people, Memorial Day, who we celebrate, who didn't come back, went through. Thinking about, you know, I put myself in their shoes. You know, what, what, when I was 18, if there was a war going on and I was drafted and I was getting ready to be deployed, and I knew that I was going to face battle. Some of these men knew they were going to face battle. They were going to go out to battle. Before the battle, what would you be thinking? What would you be doing? You know, what would your mind be thinking? So much stress. And then to go out there and to lay your life on the line for those that you love back at home and to be willing, like it says, to have that greater love that you'd give your life for your friend. We need to be so appreciative for all the sacrifice that has been given to give us the blessings that we have today. We're truly, we're truly, truly reaping the fruit of other men's labor. You know, I titled this message, Clearing Fields So That Others Can Reap the Fruit. You know, we read, And hearing is that saying true, One soweth, another reapeth. I sent you to reap, whereon you bestowed no labor. You know, freedom isn't free. And freedom isn't cheap. It costs, it costs the most. Freedom is one of the, the, one of the two greatest gifts ever given to mankind. And it was not cheap. And it was not free. It was paid for by the lives of countless and countless men. The Revolutionary War alone took 4,000 lives. World War I, I'm just hitting some of the wars. World War I hit over, over 1,000 lives were lost in World War I. World War II, 400,000 lives were lost in World War II. Korean War, over 50,000 lives. The Vietnam War, over 90,000 lives. A total number of Americans who have died in all the U.S. wars is around 1.1 million given so that we can enjoy the simple things that we enjoy every day that we take for granted so often because we haven't given ourselves every day to thank God 
for the blessings that we have in reaping the fruit of other men's labor. They cleared the field. And that went out there and cleared the field so that we could reap the fruit. And that's what I'm talking about this morning. That's what I'm preaching on this morning. Is, is appreciating the people who went before us, who went out and cleared the field so that we could reap the fruit of their labor. The Medal of Honor is the United States of America's highest and most prestigious award given out. There have been roughly 3,500 recipients of the most prestigious award, the Medal of Honor. The second lieutenant, J. Hunter Wickersham, World War I veteran was awarded this after his death. And I'll read, I'll read his citation, which, you know, if you read these, if you get on the Internet and read these citations for the um, Medal of Honor, I wish they would write a book. Because I read Alvin C. York. Most of us know who he is. Alvin York, Sergeant York. I read his, and it was so short. And I've read a book on his life, and they go through all the things that he did. And I don't know if they have to put it in a little paragraph or what, but you read these men who, who, who got the most prestigious award that can be given to anyone. And they've summarized it in such a short statement. I tried to find more on this gentleman who went before us and cleared a field so that we can enjoy the fruit of what he's done. And there, I couldn't find any more really on him. But here is, here is the citation, and I know that there could be a book written on this. But it says, Advancing with his platoon during the St. Mihail Offensive, he was severely wounded in four places by the bursting of high explosive shells. Before receiving any aid for himself, he dressed the wounds of his orderly, who was wounded at the same time. He then ordered and accompanied the further advance of his platoon. Although weakened by the loss of blood, his right hand and arm being disabled by wounds, he continued to fire his revolver with his left hand until, exhausted by loss of blood, he fell and died from his wounds before aid could be administered. This man was wounded mortally. He kept going. He kept directing. He kept telling him to, before he would take any, any help for himself, he went over and dressed the wounds of another soldier who had been injured. And, and, and you know, he didn't, take any, he didn't take any care for himself. And that's what it is. No, greater love hath no man than this, that a man would lay down his life for his soul. I'm sure there's a book could be written about what he did because uh, one of the generals, one of the, the greatest generals in World War I said uh, he was, this was one of the greatest acts of the whole war. And he wrote this poem the day before he died. Some of you may have heard it before, but he wrote this poem, and I put it back table. You can take one as you leave, but he wrote this poem the day before his death. The mist hangs low and quiet on a raging line of hills. There's a whisper of wind across the flat. You'd be feeling kind of lonesome if it wasn't for one thing, the patter of the raindrops on your old tin hat. And you can't help a figuring, sitting here alone, about this war and hero stuff and that. And you wonder if they haven't sort of got things twisted up while the rain keeps up its pitter on your old tin hat. When you step off with the outfit to do your little bit, you're simply doing what you're supposed to do. And you don't take time to figure what you gain or lose. It's the spirit of the game that brings you through. But back at home, she's waiting, writing cheerful little notes. And every night she and just keeps on a hoping that her soldier boy is safe, the mother of the boy who's over there. And fellows, she's the hero of this great big ugly war, and her prayer is on the wind across the flat. And don't you reckon maybe it's her tears and not the rain that's keeping up the pitter on your old tin hat. This great man who gave his life, who was mortally wounded by a shell, while he was suffering, he couldn't use his right hand or his, left le or his right leg, kept going forward. But before he went forward, he went over and dressed the wounds of another soldier who went on to live while he went forward and died and received the greatest award that our country has to give, the Medal of Honor. He wrote this poem the day before he died to his mother, and sent it. It's, significant, it's very significant to note that his own mother died 11 days, before, 11 days after his birth, and he was raised by his grandparents. 
And he's talking about the tears coming down from heaven, I think. On that old tin hat. You know, here was a man who was, he was willing to go and clear a field so that we could reap the fruit. He wasn't afraid to put himself in harm's way to save the life of his friends, to give up his own life so things could live, so that years from then, years from then, I can be driving down a road that I didn't build, living in a nice house that I didn't build, because someone was willing to go before me and clear the roads so that I could reap the fruit that I bestowed no labor upon. And I want to be thankful for that. And I don't want to just take that casually and just pass it by and not realize that someone went before me who was greater than me, who cleared a field that I couldn't have cleared so that I could reap the fruit that I really didn't even deserve. This is not going to be a lengthy sermon, but I think you can, you can understand where I'm going with this. I know if you're, you're a born-again Christian, you know where I'm going with this. There was someone who was in heaven before the world was created. He was God. And there was a field and it needed cleared. And, and they're like, who can clear this field? And Jesus said, I can clear it. I'll clear this field for you. I'll go and do what you can't do. And I'll dress your wounds. Even though it's going to cost me my life. I'm going to go clear those wounds. I'm going to, I'm going to fix you. And I'm going to clear that field. So that you can live. That's what Jesus did for you. He came from heaven. Born of a virgin. Lived a sinless life. Cleared the field that you couldn't clear. Took on the wounds that you couldn't take on. Bled the blood that you could not bleed to save your own life. He said, I give this to you because I have the greatest love. You know, we read about greater love hath no man than this, that a man would lay down his, friend, his life for his friend. Jesus said, I'm going to go one step further than that. And that while you're yet, and, and that while you are yet sinners, Christ died for you. He said, even though you don't understand right now, even though you don't love me right now, even though you haven't been born yet in the future, and I know that when you are, you will become a sinner, I'm going to die for you, and I'm going to clear that field that you cannot clear so that you can have eternal life in heaven and live the rest of your days in victory, telling others that someone came before you who was willing to clear the field that you couldn't clear. In Memorial Day, we need to remember our veterans. We need to remember those who serve in the country. We need to remember those who paid the ultimate sacrifice so that we could have freedom. Fathers who never came back to their children. Sons who never came back to their mother. And Jesus, who paid the ultimate price for our sins when he died on Calvary. If you do not know Christ as your Savior, if you're not sure that you're saved, Make your calling and election sure. Don't, you know, if I had sent a son away to die, if this was my son who went away to die, gave up his life heroically to save the world, to save America, to save his, his future generations, if I had done that and people just took that lightly, that would be the greatest crime you could commit against me, a father. And you wonder why people who do not accept Jesus Christ as their Savior, you wonder why God is angry with them. He has a right to be. Give your life to Christ and understand He died for you. He loves you so much that He cleared the field you couldn't clear so that you could reap fruit that you bestowed no labor upon. We're reaping fruit this morning. Give up their lives in various places unknown places, places that we can't imagine, circumstances that we can't imagine, went through things that we can't imagine, went through hardships that we can't even think about. And I wish I could put it in better words this morning for you today to understand how great a sacrifice our country has given to us, our forefathers. We read about how great our forefathers were because they trusted in God and they fought for freedom. Jesus is the ultimate example.
And he did the same thing for us on a much bigger level. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this service. We thank you, Lord, for Memorial Day. Help us, Lord, to remember today. Help us remember tomorrow. Lord, help it not to be one day in our life where we pause for two seconds to realize the sacrifice that people have given for us, Lord, that we could reap the fruit, Lord, of a field that we haven't cleared, we haven't sown, Lord, we don't deserve. Lord, you've given us heaven, Lord, we don't deserve that. Lord, we don't deserve that. And we just praise you, Lord, for, for the clearing that you did in this world, that you could live a sinless life, Lord, that we could not. Lord, that you could, you could die on the cross where we could not go. Lord, that you could raise from the dead three days later, according to the scripture, Lord, that we could not do. But, Lord, because you've done that, we too will live again. And we praise you, Lord, for your mercy. We praise you, Lord, for your grace. We ask, Lord, that you'll be with this service. Lord, we pray, Lord, that there's anyone here that does not know you, Lord, that they would not take your grace for granted, but, Lord, that they would understand the sacrifice that you gave on, the, on Calvary. And, Lord, help us, Lord, to give up our lives for you. It's just our reasonable service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Ask for a song leader to come with us. If you would, please stand and turn to page number 308. Page number 308.